Okay, we are on. Okay, uh, so Peter, do we have minutes? We don't have minutes to review, correct? Four minutes. Okay, but we do have a quorum. We have six members of the commission present. Yep, well, so, Chris, why don't um, you just go through and uh, just for the record, let, let everybody know who's here. Okay, so for the record, uh, attending are Chris Trazik, Carol Bruce, Carol Hall, Amy Widoff, Judy Keene, and Kate Sullivan. And we do not have any guests at the moment. So call the meeting to order. Um, and the first item on the agenda is the visitor's map. Um, it's got someone the music. who's playing great music, I'm not sure who it is. Not me. If you are playing music and could demute that, it would be great. <laughs> Okay. Hi, Carol. We all set now? Yes, I have the music going all day long, so I don't think anything of it, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, so uh, for the last couple of years, we've done the Visit Connecticut map and done an ad on the map. And because so many organizations are not um, open right now and people aren't quite sure when they are going to be opening, they are not going to produce the digital map, the map this year, right, Peter? And That's so they're correct. asking yep. us, they're asking us if we would like to instead allocate those dollars to additional rack cards um, in all of the distribution centers. So personally, I don't think it makes a good use of our money to do more rack cards because I don't think there's a lot of people traveling yeah. and people picking up rack cards. So I, I'd rather use that money for either additional social media or just to pay for some more time <coughs> for Jesse. Since um, we got 1500 cut from our budget that we submitted to 1800 the council peter yeah 1800, oh, 1800. not that i'm counting <clears throat> okay and the difference with uh the digital map was um let me go find that uh, i have to go find the map so they were talking about how much oh they don't actually say in the email peter how much money it was no, I, I asked him and he hasn't responded yet to me. So um, it's not, I don't think it's a boatload of money. So it's not a significant amount, but nevertheless, um, we can carve it out if you want to set it aside for Jesse's budget. Yeah, so I, what do the rest of you think? Good idea. I'm in favor. Yeah, I would say uh, use it for whatever you think we need it for. And if Jesse needs more time, then go for it. Yeah, I agree. I agree as well. Yeah. I mean, Jesse's been running over budget for the last two years, right, Peter? <laughs> so it makes sense to... No, he's, yeah. been, he's been right on budget, just for the record. Oh, Ooh. good. <laughs> <laughs> now now he office. can go over. Right. <laughs> Okay, do you need a formal motion for that, Peter? No, that's okay. I will uh, I'll work that out with CTM and um, we'll reallocate that into uh, the, the social media line item. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> All right, and then the CTM contract? Yep, so that's one in the same. So that was wrapped into their contract. Right. And um, so I will uh, uh, modify it accordingly. We did, um, after the after we heard about the budget cut, uh, I went back to CTM and we got the um, contract reduced by about $2,000 just to stay uh, within uh, our budget uh, allocation. So just, um, I think originally it was about 11,000 and we reduced it down to 
9,300 or something like that just to, uh, so we had to uh, shorten up the, um, the time frames under which the uh, routes were uh, supplied. So I just want everybody to be aware of that as well. Well, considering everything that's going, been going on and not a lot of people traveling, I think we'll be fine yeah. with a shorter time frame. So, okay. All right, great. Chris, did you want to go um, back up, back up to the visitors map um, status? The kiosk. Oh, that visitor map. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> There's too many visitors maps here to talk about. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All okay. right. I wasn't thinking of the visitor map for in the visit in the village. Sorry. Go ahead, Peter. So let me pull up. Let me uh, see if I can do this. I'm going to pull it up on the screen so you can see the where we are with it. Assuming I can do that. Did it come up on the screen? Yeah, uh, you started to share your screen, and there it is. Okay. Good. So um, I'm work, continuing to work with Phil Lohman. He, I asked him to reach out to the shopkeepers to make sure we're covering, you know, all the businesses out there. Um, I'm going to be meeting with him tomorrow uh, to see the status of that. But this just gives you the latest. He added the color and he started putting the numbers of all the businesses in there. Um, so this just gives you a sense of uh, where we are with um, – the, the details. So the uh, the listing, I mean, it's still we're still editing it, but um, this just gives you a flavor for how it might um, ultimately look. Did a wonderful. I think we may change the title. Right now it reads Old Weathersfield Center. Um, that's not a uh, that's not a phrase or a term that I think we've ever used before. No. So, uh, so we'll have to come up with something else. Any, if anyone has any suggestions, let me know. Could it be village? Old Weathersfield Village? A lot of people call it a village. Yeah, I mean, that's what I, I was going to say the same thing, Peter. I think everyone calls it village. Yeah. So. Or village center. I think we just refer to it as the village. Yeah. Or how about the village of Old Wethersfield? Hmm. I think that flows a little better than Old Wethersfield Village. Either one. Yeah, either one is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think no, I like that, Judy, the village of Old Wethersfield. Yeah. So it, it's not it's not like we're trying to cash in on old Sturbridge Village. Right. Right. Yeah. Amy, uh, do you have any thoughts, Amy? Um, I actually like Old Weathersfield Village Center, um, but the village of Old Weathersfield is good too. And Phil drew my house on this map. <laughs> Did he really? Yes. With, it looks with the greenhouse too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He tried to he tried to capture, you know, as much detail as he could. I see my son's house. Wow. Yeah, he did a really nice job. It's gorgeous. Yeah, he really did. Um, I just had does. one question on the parking, because uh, he notes he's got the first church, he's got Trinity, and what's, does Trinity have two parking lots, or is the other one Heart Seed? The other one is Heart Seed. See, where my, can you see the arrow there? No, no, because um, the picture of everybody is sitting on that part of it. I mean, all okay, the so to the to the right of the P, the last P on the on the right, that yeah. on, to the right of that is uh, uh, heart seed. Yeah. Okay, so are we okay with putting the, those P's there because people are going to think it's public parking? I'm, I'm meeting with the uh, first church tomorrow to talk about the parking study and incorporating you know, their parking lots into the overall parking system. So okay. uh, we'll, we'll work out that detail uh, shortly and just to make sure they're, they're on. And I'll, and I'll also talk to, to Trinity as well. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, I just don't want this to get out and then have them get into an uproar because people think it's public parking and we didn't get their permission or talk to them. So mm -hmm. as, as long as we've cleared it with them, then I think we're good. Yep. No, I, I, I just do, have I, I just have one suggestion. It looks like behind it, it looks like the Keeney uh, Center. The P is right on top of the building. If we could put the P in the parking lot, that would be better. And maybe okay. make that a larger P because that's the base, that's where we want everybody to park, correct? Right. Yep. Yep. Well, he could leave it the size it is and just make the other piece smaller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but that's really public. That's really the only public parking, other than the uh, fire station. Yes, and whatever's on the street. Yep, you're yeah, right. Right, right, <clears throat> right, right. But it would yep. be good to, um, yeah, make the other piece smaller, because that's not really public parking. And put the P in the parking lot. Larger P would um, yeah. guide people first to those places. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm looking at the um, number 16 uh, for the old Academy Weathersfield Historical Society. Um, we find we get a lot of confusion, particularly school groups coming. Um, that we mean for them to go to the Keeney Center and they show up with their school bus and drive into the old Academy parking lot. Um, and it's helped since we put up the sign that says old Academy uh, library and office. I'm wondering if it might be too much to fit on this map, but if it says Weathersfield Historical Society, old Academy. So keep uh, Weathersfield Historical Society and then just do a hyphen old Academy. Um, or or how about offices? Offices. Okay, offices. That would. Yeah. That would cover. Weathersfield Historical Society office. Um, but we do want people to come to the to the library if they're looking for the library. Oh, okay. Okay. When you call it the library, do you refer to it as the old academy or? Yes, the old academy. So maybe just staying with old academy then. Histor Weathersfield Historical Society slash Old Academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that probably makes sense. I think I think this I think the interpretive sign out front might say Old Academy at the top. Yes, it says um, it says Weathersfield Historical Society in the center. It says Old Academy and then offices and library. Okay, all right. And Amy, I believe there is a new house going up next to you. There is. Yeah, so maybe that could be added in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks pretty crowded when you look at this picture. It is pretty crowded. <clears throat> well, the whole village is very crowded. Yes. And that's, that's part of the charm. Right because it's very walkable. Yes, absolutely. So, makes a big difference. So we are we are going to put the kiosk right at the intersection of church uh, and marsh in that bumped out island. Good. Um I I did talk to the property owner there. So, um we just have to make sure we're not going to have any conflicts with utilities and things like that. So we're we're checking that out right now. Oh, good, because I thought there was a concern with the snow removal and it was going to get knocked over because of the snow removal. Well, it might, it might, depending on the levels of snow, but it's going to be one of those things we just have to deal with. Right. Um, we did have a concern about um, updating the, uh, the panels as businesses come and go, which will happen. There is no easy solution to that. I did reach out to a couple of uh, manufacturers of these panels. None of them have a, there's no, um, you know, easy, easy fix where you can just put something on the panels because of the way they're fabricated. Um, so uh, uh, the, the panel replacement is about $400 
plus or minus shipping and things like that. So just be aware of that, that we may end up having to carry a line item so that these can be <coughs> updated uh, every, every whatever period of time. Yeah. So, um, so that will be something we have to stay on top of. Where do you I get them from, Peter? I don't think that's too bad, though, in terms of a budget line item. But if we just assume it's going to be at the minimum every two years, and maybe every year. Yep. I don't think that's bad either. No, it's not. I just want to be everyone to be aware of the, the, the cost impacts. And, now, um, can we request of new businesses that they help to offset the cost of adding them to the putting up a new sign? I, I think it might be something we talk to the shopkeepers um, at the shopkeeper level rather than the individual business level. Mm -hmm. um, rather than imposing that on a, on a new business, maybe we have a, an agreement with the shopkeepers that there's some sort of um, cost sharing when we have to do this, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks. I don't know what their financial situation is these days, but. Um, Even a hundred dollars would help. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing, Judy. Yeah, it's a great idea. How about EDIC giving us some money for that? Could be. Yeah. Basically your, your budget and theirs is almost one in the same. So it's I kind of, you know, we do co-mingle, um, but. Um, but yeah, I think um, since it's specifically promoting, you know, the shopkeepers, um, they should have a, a stake in this. Yeah. So Peter, what if we asked them to contribute a hundred dollars a year towards, a, towards the the panel replacement? And even if we only do it every two years, it's two hundred bucks against the four hundred dollar cost. So. Mm -hmm. And it becomes for them just kind of a standing, oh, we have to a hundred bucks towards replacing the sign. Sure. I like that idea. What's their budget like? I don't know that. Yeah, I yeah. really don't. I don't know what their situation presently mm -hmm. is. If that's a big, if that's what a big ask or not, but. It's worth checking out. Yeah, we can definitely have it a seems, have conversation. It seems to me that, you know, you, you, you work to get shopkeepers to come into weather, old Wethersfield. And then you slap them. Well, if you want to be on the location sign, you have to put the tax. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, but I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that approach. Yeah, yeah. A hundred. You could share it. That's that's better. Yeah, a hundred dollars a year is minimal to each business. I mean, how many are in the shopkeepers? Do you know? Well, I, yeah, I don't know that either. So, um, but I mean, what it would be maybe ten, fifteen dollars a piece a year. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not. It's not much. Right. Mm -hmm. They could sell it as a member benefit. Mm -hmm. Right. It's more like an easy squeeze plan. <laughs> yep. yep. And we do uh, intend to uh, have these printed as well so they can be handed out. Um, so that's the other, other part of this. In right. the but, shops, they'd be handed out in the shops, Peter? Yes. Is there a box on the kiosk where some of the flyers could be stored? Yep, uh, Phil Lohman has been um, maintaining and filling those when they get low, so we could uh, uh, we can double up in 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 those. Yeah, because those um, for the for the Heritage Walk brochures, they're at Broad Street, Keeney Center, and are they all is are the brochures also available at the Cove? Web Dean Three Stevens. He asks. Yeah, Cove and Web Dean Stevens. Yep. Okay. Now the only um, stores and shops that are on this list are, are actually members of the shopkeepers. Association. No, no, we're, no, we're including we're including everybody. Okay. So we need to make sure we don't miss anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. So is the Charles on here? I yes. believe they. I believe they are. Yes, number five. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. And. Is, um, I, mean, I was. I thought we added the Lenoche's new. Let's see, twenty eight. Yep. Twenty eight. Yep. Is the got, Lenoche's kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to check that one to make sure that's what they're going to call, call it. it. But, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a, we have a few things like that that we still have to do. 
And so have, you don't have the river on here, do you? Oh, yes, you do. Yeah, river we do restaurant. number 39. Yep, I just saw it, sorry. Yep, it's, that's okay. You know, our pictures keep getting in the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is Larissa Lake's uh, other business Linden? Yep. So what oh. number, that's number? 15. 15? No, her other business. The other one. The other one, yeah. It's, it, we can't see the rest of 27. Is, that, oh. is it there? No. No, that's Bijou Rose. You might but be it's the same building. Yeah, let me, I don't, we might have missed that one. Good yeah, chance, whoever, whoever mentioned that. So that would be, you know, 20, 27, 28, right in that area. Yeah, it's 27, it's, yes. It's in yep. the same building as Bijou Rose. Yep. Right. It is. Oh. We'll so you would do the same thing like you did for 12, because 12 is coffee roasters, the travel, the country store, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, we could, so, we could double up. Yeah. yeah, okay. Or we could Does change, the number, change the number and add another one. I don't think it's that big of a, a deal for Phil to, because these are, these are on top of the drawing, so. Mm -hmm. Now the coffee roaster, I think, has a name. Yes, we were... Um, waiting to find it. Um, so we got to track that one down too. Where is that? It's going to be it's where the hairdresser was. Yeah, it's, oh. yeah. Number 12. Okay, great. Well, that's good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for consistency, Peter, I would make 27 Bijou Rose and whatever Larissa's other business is because yep. I don't want to your complaints about well number 12 we're all listed together we don't get separate listings yep mm -hmm. okay. yeah, a couple in there yep yeah do we know when Lenoches is opening uh he's probably still three or four weeks away okay i think he's trying to open up before the month's out but tough time Yes. What month? June or July? <laughs> July. Sorry. Okay. I'm already ahead of myself here. Yes, yeah. you are. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I'm hanging on to June. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a couple all hours right. left. Uh, all right. Any other comments or things that are missing or things that need correcting for Peter? It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. It does. Good. He does okay. an amazing job. Yeah, he does good work. I have a, just a curiosity. Um, on, on 27 Bijou Rose, um, my daughter-in-law has a separate business inside there that she uses a spot of. And would that, could her, you know, business name go there along with Bijou Rose and um, that other little store? What's the business? Well, she goes by her, her name, Caitlin Hall. But is it, can we, can you put just Bijou Rose and then slash spa? Uh, Caitlin Spa? A skincare is more like it than a oh. spa. So you could go um, Bijou Rose and then skincare. Is that the name of her business though? No, her, she go, her business name, she just uses her, her full name. But then people won't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking maybe if she said Caitlin's skincare. Now, how many people are in Bijou Rose as independent businesses, though, Carol? Because no, he just, rents out chairs to a lot of other people. I know that's, <coughs> you know, I don't think they, each chair has a business name. It's just where she has a separate room, a separate space. But the hairdressers that work there, you know, they come and they go. Depends on where they want to work. And um, I don't really think they have business names. So does she book her own appointments or are they booked through the Bijou Rose? They book through Bijou Rose. Well, they... All those uh, hairdressers now, I don't know if that works with a lot of them, uh, they just take the calls on their cell phones. But does your daughter book through Bijou Rose? No, she, they call her directly. They, they don't call her through Bijou Rose. 
Does she have signage on the outside of the building? Well, they did, they did have a sign, but the former person who was um, renting that spot didn't want the sign in the window. She had a big professional one made. I, and I meant to talk with her about getting that out there again, you know, because it is legitimate. She has a, a space in there that's a separate business, you know. She does is pay them rent. So, Carol, but, if you maybe want to have her give me a call and we can talk about the details with her. Sure. Yeah, yeah. just have her uh, give me a yell and, and I'll circle back with her and we'll, we'll figure, figure it out. Yeah, rather than here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That All right. Good. Anything else, guys? It looks right. great. It looks right. great. Peter, please tell Phil, fabulous job. Was worth the right. wait. Yep, I will. <laughs> So, okay. All right. Uh, so for those who didn't hear, Peter, would you like to give everyone the good news about uh, what happened mid-month with the council? Yes, our town council, I think it was unanimous. Yeah, I think it unanimous. Uh, was, uh, they unanimously approved the uh, complete streets policy that was prepared by uh, Bike Walk Weathersfield and our Bike Pedestrian Advisory Committee and town staff and a, 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 a throng of multitudes who helped us with that. So uh, um, we're pleased to announce that. Um, I think it, we're the uh, latest municipality in Connecticut or the most recent municipality in Connecticut to do that. So um, we now have that uh, achievement behind us. So um, going forward, um, we now have a policy in place that all public improvement projects where practical will consider uh, including uh, various complete streets um, techniques into the projects, you know, that sidewalks and bike lanes and bus shelters mm -hmm. and whatever uh, is appropriate for the particular uh, project. Um, more guidance will be provided to the town once we complete the bike and pedestrian plan, but we wanted to get the uh, policy. Uh, in place before that so that uh, as we go forward uh, with projects, um, the town has taken a, an official position on that. So um, there were um, many questions by the council. Um, so there was a little bit of a, a learning curve on that, but at the end of the uh, presentation, they all voted uh, to adopt the policy. So we're very, very pleased to announce that. Yeah, no, I think that's terrific. So Peter, I, there have, do you know how many towns have adopted it in the state? Not very many, it's like a handful, isn't it? Um, somewhere I have a list, it's, um, it, there's more than you would think. Um, there's Glastonbury has one, Portland has one, Hartford, um, yeah. West Hartford. Um, New Britain. New Britain, a whole bunch down in, you know, the, uh, the Gold Coast communities and a bunch on the shoreline. So, um, yeah, it's, it's more, it's becoming uh, more and more, um, more and more common, but, um, um, but nevertheless, it's um, less than, uh, than it should be. So we're uh, happy to be now included uh, in that list. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the other piece of that, Peter, um, you're still working on the sustainability um, designation and that's due August? Yeah, we're working on the sustainable CT uh, certification uh, application that's due August 25th. So we have about two months uh, to wrap that up. This uh, the adoption of the complete streets policy gives us some uh, credit uh, towards that certification. So it's a bonus um, getting that approved before the deadline. So we yep. will incorporate that into the um, into the submission, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other things that we are um, presently working on. We are uh, planning a, uh, a forum in later July that basically uh, pulls together all the stakeholders who have a role in the, in the Great Meadows. So the Game Club, the Conservation Trust, Goodwin College, the Farmers, Farmers Market, uh, folks like that, we're gonna pull them together and just have a a forum to discuss 
uh, issues of common concern as it affects the uh, Great Meadows. We're also going to invite uh, Rocky Hill representatives. Uh, we're going to reach across the river to Glastonbury and see if they want to participate. Uh, we want uh, one of the primary agendas is to just make people aware that the Putnam Bridge Trail is coming and that will be bringing uh, a lot of additional people uh, into Weathersfield uh, and into the meadows. There have been some conflicts in the past down there, so we want to make sure we um, are getting ahead of that. And if we have to do some things uh, to make sure people respect uh, the meadows when they go down there. Um, Rocky Hill had lots of issues. They ended up having to put a gate to keep people uh, with vehicles out of that end. We haven't necessarily heard that that's a similar issue here, but nevertheless, we want to have that conversation and see if there's some things we need to do in anticipation uh, of the meadows. So that also is something that will be part of the sustainable uh, CT uh, certification. But um, yes, thanks. Thanks for bringing that up. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and Peter's going, he's ambitious. He's going for silver certification. And there's just a handful of towns that have that. Most of them have opted for the bronze because the requirements are less stringent. So kudos for Peter. He's always pushing us to, you know, do the best we can. <laughs> well, not, not going we're, so, we're not there yet. So, uh, but we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> Okay, uh, and Peter, can you just note that Jill joined the meeting? Yes, I did, I did see that. Hi, Jill. Okay, hi, Jill. <laughs> okay, Rochambeau signed. So Peter um, has some good news. He's been really busy this month. Uh, has some great news on the Rochambeau sign. So we tracked down the original artwork um, through a little detective work. It turned out that uh, the uh, original designer was our uh, famous uh, David Wolfram, who helped us with the Heritage Walk uh, panels. He was able to retrieve uh, the electronic files from his computer, believe it or not. Um, he had to do a little um, work to the resolution to get it to the level uh, that they need today. The, the standards were a little different back 10 years, 10, 12 years ago when we did it originally. Uh, so we found the, uh, we tracked down the, the contractor, which is a company called uh, Panier, P-A-N-N-I-E-R Graphics. They're out of Pennsylvania. So just today I signed the order. It's going to cost, as I said earlier, about $400 or so. So um, that is um, underway right now. So we're waiting for the, to get the proofs back. Uh, so hopefully by the uh, end of the summer, we can replace uh, the panel. Um, which is now beginning to even more rapidly deteriorate than before. So, where is that one? Know. Is that is that at the Web Dean Stevens? No, that's the Lucky one Lewis. in front of Lucky Lou's, looking at First Church. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are we going to keep it up that angle? Yeah, I'm going to keep it that way. They right. set it up that way. We're going to keep it that way. So, okay. I hope it's going to be a different material that is going to last a little bit longer well that lasted 10 years and that's their standard guarantee so um we just have to uh you know sure there's some funding to change those out it's a different material than we use for the heritage walk a different right. uh supplier uh we looked at that um before we decided the heritage walk and we went with a different uh provider so i think uh we probably made the right uh choice we could not use the Heritage Walk uh, uh, design uh, manufacturer. This is a different product. It slides into the case and it has a different connectivity to the case, has different edges and, and such. So in different thickness. So we ended up having to go back to the original uh, provider, but it should, it should, I don't know, if, I'll, I'll, I'll see what the guarantee is. Maybe they've improved the product since, since then, but I think something, it got, this one got chipped somehow, and then once water started getting into it, um, so knock on wood. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that was our formal agenda, and then um, Peter, uh, oh, there is a ribbon cutting this Friday. No, this Thursday. When is it? Oh, my next God, I Monday. Remember. Next Monday. Yeah. Sorry, God, I'm so bad. <laughs> 
the slip away tours, my brain is slipping away. <laughs> so that was unexpected. So obviously he is going forward, which I think is terrific. Um, so I would, I would think we'd want to ask Jesse to maybe do some advertising of the fact that we now have boat tours that are leaving from the cove. Um, and that people can, you know, add to their their activities in the village by adding on a boat tour as well. I think so. there's already been a couple of people that have rented it, and uh, I heard I heard good things. So good. that's nice. Yeah. And I have actually seen postings about Captain Morgan's. Do you remember what it was? Captain Morgan's tours or something? He trains, um, I think he trains other people to operate. I hope it's, uh, you know, just basic training or people who might be looking to get their captaincy, that kind of thing. Okay. But I've noticed that it's been posting more on Facebook and I was kind of like, oh, interesting. So. And he's so. going to join, he's going to join in the festivities on the, at the ribbon cutting too. Good. Okay. So terrific. So those of you that can make it on Monday, that would be great to see people. I'm not sure if I can. I tend to have another tentative meeting already. So we'll see what happens. But those is who can make Cove, it. Is the Cove Warehouse open or can it be open um, lunchtime on, on Monday? You're on You're mute. On mute. You're on mute. <laughs> or yes, we can arrange for that. <laughs> yeah, maybe just for that little window before and during and after. Um, we of could course. maybe even, we haven't, we haven't figured out logistically where we're actually going to do the ribbon cutting. We're a little, a little nervous about getting everybody out on the, on the docks in case, you know, so we may do it on the land and maybe that's a good, maybe up there's a good spot. We can talk about that. Are you afraid of a tidal wave? <laughs> yes. We do have to uh, limit the number of people in the warehouse, uh, as you know, and of course, uh, the town manager wants us to make sure we have everybody's contact information for contact tracing. Maybe they can just look in the door then. Well, but we'll have a sign up sheet because we're opening this Saturday. Oh, okay, good. Sign up sheet. So anybody really wants to go in, they can, they can sign up and go Great. in. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so, Peter, are we ready for kind of round robin on who's got what going on? I think so, yep. Okay. All right. So, I'm just going to follow my screen. And so, that means, Judy, you're up first. <laughs> okay. Um, EDIC, I've kind of not been at meetings until the last couple of weeks. But um, there's uh, a, what they're working on right now is to uh, provide provide information to planning and zoning on whether or not storage facilities should be um, in town and what they should look like, uh, how many units, all those uh, specifics. And planning and zoning is going to make decisions on all of it. But we've had some conversations about it. And there is a, a building that would like to have a storage facility. So um, it kind of makes it even more um, important right now to, to make a decision. There has been a temporary ban on storage facilities in town. There are several, but um, I think with the way people live today, um, people would like more options. So we'll see. Okay. All right. All right, Amy, you're up next. Okay, so we have a lot going on uh, behind the scenes. As I said, we're going to open up the HD and the Cove Warehouse this Saturday from 2 to 5. It's on July 4th. We've adjusted our hours a little bit later because with the heat of the day, people tend to come out later and walk. So we want to try and get some of those later people as well. Um, of course, we have to limit the number of people in the buildings at any one time. Everybody needs to wear masks uh, and the contact tracing. So we're going to just open for that day, see how it goes, and see about adding more weekend hours as we progress. Um, Keeney is still closed because uh, we don't feel that we can handle the protocols uh, necessary with cleaning. Um, 
yet um, for producing a series of educational videos. Uh, the first one will be up in the next day or so, uh, which will feature Sheldon's horse. Um, we're going to have Martha Smart uh, talking about the burying ground and possibly which a Blackbird Pond. Um, we've got um, uh, Charles Floyd, a wonderful actor who played uh, Quash Gomer for us in Lantern Light Tours a couple years ago. We're going to have his video uh, and a few other things, uh, very local uh, and it'll be a lot of fun. And they, they're accompanied by a scavenger hunt. So families can go out and walk around and do the scavenger hunt. So, Amy, how do you find that uh, on the Wethersfield Historical Society website? It will be on our website. They're not up yet, but um, in the next couple days, the first one will be up. That sounds good. Terrific. Oh, we've got Frank Winiarski is going to give a tour of the prison exhibit. Oh, that's good. So, mm -hmm. fun things. And are the Keeney Coolers happening? That's the next thing on my list. Keeney Coolers. Um, we are planning on having the first two uh, filmed. So we're going to have the bands play in Keeney Hall with no audience present. And then if we can get a hold of the Weathersfield uh, cable access TV people, which are having problems, um, we want to broadcast it on cable access TV. And maybe or maybe not, it depends on copyright, whether or not we can uh, live stream it as well. But I want to try and be able to reach those people that don't use computers, which are a good portion of our members. They're older and they just don't use computers. And we want them to be able to enjoy it as well. So, uh, and then the third concert, or the first two concerts will be Goza and uh, Jolly Beggars. And then the last one will be number nine. And we are planning uh, to have that in Cove Park in August. And, How is going to move locations? Okay. Yeah. The third phase, and I'm still talking to the town manager about it, third phase uh, allows concerts like that with 15 feet in between blankets or families. And uh, Cove Park will give that space. Or if we did it at Keeney, we couldn't have as many people. Right. So uh, that's what we're planning for Keeney Coolers. Uh, <laughs> We're still holding out hope we'll be able to do craft fair the first Saturday in October. Um, really don't know how that's going to go. Um, Lantern Light Tours, uh, we're, we have a fantastic script. It's all about women. Our exhibit this year will be Weathersfield Women. Uh, but we're, I'm seriously considering putting it all online and doing a video of all the performances of all our different characters videoed and having it on the internet. Hopefully we can have a, a broadcast on TV as well so more people can see it. Uh, okay. So that's what we're looking at for this Great. year. Thing. As much in-person things as we can do, but uh, putting a lot of it online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amy, the cable TV, they haven't responded to you or logistically no. they may not be able to do it? No, they haven't responded. The phone number? Uh, is out of service, okay. and the e we haven't had a response. And um, the ladies in the town manager's office are working to track down alternate contact information for me. Okay. Well, let me know if um, they don't get back to you. Okay. Thanks. Because the town meetings are on are on the yeah. the television station, right? Yeah. Yeah. So somebody's yeah. working. We, we want to try and, and get everyone and so many people, they don't use social media, they don't use computers at all. And we want to be able to have everybody enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. And can I just say, Amy, nice virtual background. Oh, yeah. Lo lovely building. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> it looks really nice. <laughs> all right, Kate. All right. Um, we are open again for tours. We are limiting it to four people on a tour and they're supposed to call ahead and schedule a tour or if they're walking and they call us to ask and there's space, we can take them on. Um, one, one guide and we're doing just two, well, three tours on a regular weekend day and then two tours on Sunday. 
Um, I believe we're open Wednesday through Sunday, so a shortened week or maybe, yeah, yeah, when, yeah, it's either Wednesday or Thursday. I don't work the weekdays, so I don't know. Um, so for example, on a Sunday, there's just a one o'clock and a three o'clock tour. That gives us time in between to kind of air out the houses and clean up a little after. And of course, like Amy, we're doing our contact tracing. Um, building is moving along well. Uh, it looks like, of course, it's always inching forward with time, but it looks like um, mid-August, we will have a certificate of occupancy and we can start moving in. So excited about that. Um, you all know Charles retired. You probably also know that Cindy and our curator, Rich Malley, are acting directors right now. And they've been very busy with uh, Facebook content. We've been really excited and getting a lot of really good feedback. Um, we're also sending it out on email to the people on our list. So uh, that's been going really well. And we're just hanging in there doing, oh, of course, weddings haven't started. That's supposed to be phase three. Um, I, that's a good idea to talk to the manager. I've been trying everywhere else to get information. So maybe I'll give them a call because um, I can't seem to find out exactly how a wedding is going to look um, as far as dancing and drinking and all of that numbers. So um, yeah. They haven't have a lot posted of... phase three yet, have they, Peter? No. The governor's office? So. Nope. He usually posts it literally like two days before. So, so not helpful. <laughs> I know, but you know what, if you read phase two and some of that, it'll give you an idea of what it, what they're looking at. So Right, but weddings are kind of unique, which everybody right. agrees with me. I've talked to the health department, I've talked to other health departments, as they don't find out till the governor announces to the world, so right. that doesn't help. Um, but yeah, I'm, I have a lot of anxious people wanting to know, do people have to wear masks at my wedding? Can people dance at my wedding? Can people drink at my wedding? So, I, I, and we've lost 10 weddings, which is very discouraging. Um, and a lot of people move to next year. So, yep. you know, I'm, I'm glad we're hanging on to some. And we're also doing elopements. So uh, people can, um, it's $100 if they're just at the five and under size, and it's 250 if they're above that. Um, and it's just outdoors for 90 minutes. They can add a half hour at a time for 20 25 extra, and we've gotten several of those. So um, that's been kind of fun. We tried to take pictures of the couple with their masks on, because that's fun. They like, to keep, we, get, <laughs> we get a good reaction on Facebook from those. So that's kind of, so that's, you know, it's not, it's not putting us over the top money-wise, but at least it's something. So that's what we've been doing. Yeah, I have a question on the yep. uh, website. They mentioned garden tours. Oh, that was this, well, and anyone can, you, can go in the garden anytime, but that was this past Sunday was Connecticut Historic Garden Day. And so the way they handled it, um, everybody had to wear a mask and they, instead of Rose being in the garden, you know, talking face to face with people, she did a sheet that listed whatever, everything that was in the garden and there were numbers next to each plant to tell people what it was. And um, so that it worked out pretty well. Uh, they got... They didn't advertise it, but people walking by, there was a sign. And I think they got somewhere between 20 and 30 people. So, you know, it's not, not their usual turnout for Garden Day, but it was, they were happy with it. But for now, now that that's over, if people are walking through Old Weathersfield and they happen to see a garden, um, did I get it right? They can um, just walk in there and look at the garden and there's yes. a sheet that tells you what everything is. Um, I'm not sure they're putting the sheet is out every day. I can ask Rose because that would be nice now that they have the numbers with the plants. Mm -hmm. um, I know they're, they're trying to figure out something a little more permanent, whether it's um, that same kind of a box that a real estate agent uses where you would put the flyers in it um, or some kind of a sign. I'm not really sure. The sign would have to be changed out, you know, because the, it just has what's currently in bloom. If you're just doing it individually, do you have to sign in at the office or can you just walk directly? I don't think so. I think you can just walk through. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Yep. Right. Katie, would you like to give a plug for the coloring page that Phil did? Oh, yeah. It's on the back. Charming. The one on the back. Yeah, the, uh, Phil did a great little um, TV. coloring page of the garden. So uh, you can color that in. It's really cute. Phil's amazing. 
anybody that missed uh, Charles's little going away, he did an amazing picture, a caricature of Charles wearing his big stovepipe hat and um, his jacket that he always wore at the Christmas uh, party. And he looks kind of like P.T. Barnum and he's pointing at the map of Wethersfield. And he was really pleased with that. It was a nice going away. Peter was there and yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Do we have any other business? All right. Then um, I am going to recommend, as we usually do, that we not have a meeting in July um, and that we just uh, skip that and then do our regular meeting in August because then we'll be gearing up for hopefully a lot of in-person fall events. Fingers crossed. <laughs> August 25th. August 25th. And maybe we can meet in person. Who knows? <laughs> See, we hope that would be nice. Well, we could if we met outside. That is true. Except, you know, buggy. I know. Yeah. This time of day. So I personally would pass because I'd get eaten alive. <laughs> <laughs> we could also, if we need to distance. I have to watch crowds because of my immune system. So, yeah go to a lot of these things, but if it's going mm -hmm. to be crowded and large, I just can't go. We could yeah. maybe meet in the barn because we could space out more there than in the town hall. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep that in mind. But otherwise, it was really good to see everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone looks healthy, happy. Have a great summer. If you're you too. doing vacations like everybody's going to be doing this year. <laughs> I'm getting to know my house better. Uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I know mine all too well. <laughs> and I still haven't cleaned out closets. Me either. I, I'm still looking to do that. <laughs> Peter, Take I have a care. Quick question. Stay healthy. Oh. All, right. all right. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. I just have bye a question bye. for you, Peter. Okay, I can um, stay on. Let me uh, let me let me turn off the uh, recording here. Okay.